Thanks to the United States First Amendment law of free speech, we have come into a new era with internet, YouTube, more transparency and the possibility for average citizens to express and publish valuable information for mankind. Like the important information 70 years after World War II that Adolf Hitler died in Argentina on February 13th, uh, 1962 at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, to which I will add my own research focusing on Octogon, the Pharaohs, Templars, the Pharaohistocracy, and the Swiss connection. So, just punch pause. So, punch in Hitler in Argentina yourself to find more evidence because here I will just try to fit it into the historical, geographical and ethnical context related to the motherland of evil and base of the Pharaonic Templars of Octagon. See my videos The Pharaoh Show, Octagon, The Empire of Darkness, Pharaohistocracy and the rest so I don't have to repeat the basics for total explanation. So here you can see the typical nose of uh, Mr. Hitler. I mean, this is the most typical thing in his um, in his uh, f physiognomy. And uh, um, actually, I know a, a guy, a Swiss guy, who came from Argentina and who has exactly the same nose. He's a very dangerous guy working for the Swiss police spying on people and lying and he has exactly the same nose like the middle part is like more like retracted inside and it's the outer part like uh, coming over and more forwarded so well this is him My same nose I know now through my own experiences in Octagon Switzerland that the Swiss hate transparency free speech youtube and the internet just as evil never like to be looked into its cards and the swiss strike back hard on anyone who dares to criticize switzerland and uh, and reveal their horrendous octagon nazi templar organization by using terror torture and multiple assassinations by the Swiss Nazi police and their Nazi Justice Department. There are eyewitnesses and proofs now that Hitler lived on almost 20 years after 1945 and died at the age of 73 in 1962 Argentina at the land of the SS, Prince of Darkness of the Pharistocracy, Prince Bernhard zur Lippe Bisterfelde. The guy who founded the secret Bilderbergers and who had studied in Lausanne, Switzerland, in the motherland. I told you in one of my other videos what Bilderberg actually means. You know, Bild, well this guy is German actually, and Bild is a German word for a picture. And Berg, well it means mountain, so this means mountains of pictures. Like in, um, in Auschwitz, in the concentration camps. And remember, this guy was an SS. Once an SS, always an SS. So I explained it in one of my other pic uh, videos then. So, mountains of pictures of all the destroyed lives. As we can see, you know, on the videos. Uh, mountains of shoes, mountains of glasses. And also mountains of pictures. So, uh, this guy, he married with the uh, fair aristocracy of the Netherlands. And um, considering the word Bilderberg, the, the mountains, well, there are no mountains in the flat country of the Netherlands. The name says it all, Netherlands, the low countries. So it's a funny name for a low country, you know, there are, there's no mountain at all. Um, you must be glad that you are like in this country, like uh, over the water and not below the water, sort of. And Bild, it's a German name, so it has nothing to do with that country at all. I mean, the name doesn't fit in the Low Countries. It's German, and it's 
mountains. Well, it, I mean, the Bilderbergs, it's all related to the Second World War. And so was this guy here, an SS. And Hitler died apparently on his land in Argentina. Bilderbergs, remember that. Mountains of pictures, as we can see in the videos. So one shouldn't look at Argentina, Uruguay and Paraguay as some dark-skinned Latin countries full of Latinos, native Indians and Mestizos. Oh no, this is European, with places like Colonia Suiza and Nueva Helvetia, who look like being in Switzerland where everyone states Swiss in their minds and deeds, their most dreadful deeds. So here you can see the sun of the SS Prince of Darkness, who uh, founded the um, the Bilderbergs, he's a king now, and he married, of course, a woman from Argentina, where they have land, and where Mr. Hitler lived until 1962. Well, isn't it charming? And look at her nose, the Argentinian queen. There could be some Hitler genes in there, and the ears as well. They look like Hitler's ears. We don't know what's happening, folks. So her father was a minister under the uh, dictatorship from 1976 to 1981 in Argentina, where roughly 30,000 people got tortured and just disappeared. So it's it's just, you know, it's a Swiss connection, you know, it's the Nazi connection. Yeah. Well, she doesn't look very South American, does she? <laughs> yeah. So her father was Jorge Zorregueta. I hope I pronounced it all right. So there's some bit of the story. So these are our world leaders and this is why the uh, all these Nazis could make it to Argentina because of the Swiss connection. The same ones who finance Adolf Hitler and where all the money went to and where they have the uh, a lot of uh, a lot of Swiss descendants. Yeah. Yes, these pharaohs from Switzerland had it all organized from beginning to end and even after the end, together with the rest of the fair aristocracy as this SS Prince of Darkness who hit the war out with the rest of his fair aristocratic pals in palaces throughout England. And Prince SS Bernhard of the pharaonic SS for Isis the Goddess always smiled to the people and telling everyone what they wanted to hear, thinking by himself, once an SS, always an SS. Like, once a Swissy, always a Swissy. Just as the Swiss General Eisenhower of Swiss descent told everyone what they liked to hear, like repeating over and over again how he hated the Germans after having seen the concentration camps, as if it were a total surprise to him. The five-star General Eisenhower and chief of all the Allied forces who knew for years about the mass murders going on in there in the Swiss-financed concentration camps and returned and refused to bomb the railways to Auschwitz. Let's judge this Swiss sleeper agent by his deeds and not by his words because politicians always lie and therefore he could become America's next president in 1952 for the next eight years stirring us all up against the communists and Russians during the Cold War which really set off under Eisenhower. It didn't even last one year after this Swissy quit the US Army as a general to become US president as smooth as if it were meant to be and in fact it was. It's like with building number 7 of the 9-11 scam that wasn't even hit by a plane and just fell down all by itself and therefore by evidence got pulled by demolition. So if they did one, they did them all. 
The same thing can be said about the Nazis' exfiltration to Argentina. When Mengele, Eichmann, Priebke, all here on the, on the picture, and thousands of others went there, then Adolf most, like, most likely took the same route as his evil comrades did. Hitler got financed from 1923 on in Zurich, here we can see him in Zurich, in 1923, in Zurich, Switzerland, being the reason that Hitler never attacked Switzerland and even took their orders throughout the entire war. So I'll see my other videos about it, I don't want to repeat it all. And again, it was Switzerland that shipped Hitler and all those Nazis with Swiss Red Cross passes to Argentina. So Switzerland financed Adolf Hitler in 1923. They ordered him. They won the war. Switzerland got never attacked, curiously. Uh, they took the gold, they took all the, the wealth, and then they shipped them all out to Argentina. So, how come? And they prolonged the Second World War with two years. And the rest. So how come this country is still walking free? How come? How come Argentina let this all happen? Well, that's very easy. At least 3 million Germans live in Argentina in provinces of the highland like in Cordoba province and Patagonia where there's snow and mountains perfectly looking like Europe or even worse like Switzerland. Here you can see it looks like this place here looks like Switzerland. That's where they're hiding. Look at that. It looks like Switzerland in the Alps. This is how they made that possible. And they already had it ready in 1923 when they financed this evil man in 1923 in, in, in Zurich. Probably already showed him a picture where he was going to go to finally. Yeah, I'll show you some more pictures. You think this is in Switzerland? Yeah. Same climate? No, it isn't. It's in Argentina, in South America. Look. And they're getting careless, they put it on the internet. Now, this is how they welcomed their man, their Swiss agent, Mr. Hitler. Look. Looks like the Alps, doesn't it? The Swiss colony, it says in, in Spanish. So this is the Swiss colony. Hey Swissies, you know what you did. So you can read it here in Wikipedia. 44,000 Swiss emigrated to Argentina. Well, there's probably more. Can you imagine how many there are? Here it says Swiss Argentine. And uh, they even have presidents. I think Nestor Kirchner, he's a president. He was the uh, president of Argentina. No, and there are three, at least 300,000 Swissies in Argentina. I told you, they, they go for the, the key positions. And then they, they make their Swiss dictatorship all over. Yeah. You, you thought that, that, that was in Switzerland? Right? Swiss colony in Mendoza. So now there are at least 300,000 Swiss who live in uh, Argentina and who never integrated and went for all the key positions within Argentina thus enabling the import of about 60,000 Nazi war criminals by Switzerland leading to the Argentinian dictatorship and terror of the other and the non-Swiss people of Argentina in the 60s and the 70s we just saw how they how they how they go for the key positions immediately and with three hundred thousand people at least well, you can lame the whole country and, and and rule it. So here you can see some more. Well, the internet is full of it. It's called even there's a, there's a, 
a colony of Suiza in Uruguay. Uruguay. Well, that's also one of those uh, one of those countries. I think Eichmann and Mengele they they went there. You know, they they like they traveled like uh, in between Uruguay, Paraguay, and Argentina. They even call it the European Enclave and New Helvetia. Well, we can see here they never integrated. The, the Swiss, they, they, they talk about integrating immigrants in Switzerland, but they don't even want to, immigrate, to, to integrate them, you know. They just want them to obey and to spread terror. And, um, well, these people never integrate. So this is how they made it possible. That all those Nazis came in Argentina. They had it all set in place already in 1923. It says 150 years. So they were working on it for 150 years, 100 years before, or 80 years before Mr. Hitler came in Zurich. They were already organizing this, these things, you know, because the, uh, and, and well, they, well, they just jump further on, on, on to a new country and a new place after they dominated Europe and killed so many Germans and, and all these wars by the Swiss Templars and the, the Swiss mercenaries. They just went on. They went to the USA, they went to Argentina and Uruguay, and they went all over. They want to dominate the whole world. Well, they do with their banks and everything. They do. Don't be mistaken. And as the Swiss re inhabited large parts of southern Germany after the Thirty Year War from 1618 to 1648, after Swiss mercenaries under Templar's command murdered two-thirds of the entire German population. It must be assumed, therefore, that all these 60,000 Nazi war criminals were, who went to Argentina were, in reality, Swiss sleeper agents from 35, 350 years back pretending to be German and setting up the German people in this terrible Nazi dictatorship by Octogon. The Swiss never act before they're sure to win and have it all set in place. Just as they told their man Adolf Hitler in Zurich 1923 and that they would exfiltrate him just in time before the Russians would come to Berlin. Martin Bormann who gave the octagon eagle's nest to Hitler as a token of friendship from Switzerland, the motherland, probably also made it to New Switzerland in South America. So, Swiss Argentine, yeah, Nestor Kirchner. He's on the Swiss list, together with his sister and the rest. 300,000 of them, or probably more than more, probably more likely three million. Well, there you go, the Swissy. Uh, his father is Swiss German, or was, and his mother of Croatian descent. Probably one of the Ustasha Nazis. Well, you can be damn sure of that. So Nazi from Nazi from both sides. Well, that's why he protected the uh, the Croatian and German Nazis. That's what he did. So here you can see Nestor Kirchner again in his uh, typical uh, Swiss octagon Nazi Templar outfit. So here we can see the Swissy again. He's on the Swiss list, as we just saw before. He was into, he died 2010. He was the Argentine president from 2003 to until 2007, I think it was. Here we can see him together with his wife, who's president now, also Kirchner. Look at the Swiss cross he's having there. Look. Having the white cross of Switzerland. I mean, the Kirchners, they're ruling Argentina. The Swiss rule Argentina. And of course they had all these Nazi war criminals come into Argentina. And there he is again, Mr. Kirchner from Switzerland. So this is the Swiss connection, just as Huber, Huber 1 and 2, Eisenhower, Hitler, they're all Swiss, it's all octagon. 
Of course he's into money laundering and, and this guy, uh, because he's Swiss, you know, they cannot do anything else. They steal and lie, money business with the motherland, Nazis, Nazism, Templar stuff. That's all the Swissies can do. So this is why all these Nazi war criminals went to Argentina. There's no other reason. Wakey, wakey. Yes, the Swiss rule Argentina. And they had all these Nazis come to Argentina. Included Adolf Hitler, Mr. Wolf. And here's some more, you know, just promising things like uh, having a trial, you know, for the criminals, uh, Nazi criminals in, in the, 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 the Argentinian dictatorship. Well, of course, you didn't do a thing. So when his uh, when he died, 2010, then his wife became the president. You know, the Kirchners and the Swissies. Kirch. That means a church, like Mr. Churchill, another pharaoh. Yeah, well, they, the Swissies rule Argentina and uh, protect the Nazis, just as they rule the U.S. and Germany. And there's his wife, today's Argentine's president. We can see how people think about these people. And there's his sister of Kirchner, another Swissy, also in politics. Probably become, she probably will become next president. They do money laundering, tax evasion, they bring it all to the motherland. And, uh, well, they're never inter really integrated. All pharaohs and sisters of Isis of the motherland, Octogon. And there's another Swissy. Hermes Binna. And he went into politics as well. They all go for the key positions, as I told you. Let's have a look. And there he is, Swiss. Hermes Binna. Oh, he's a governor. They just go into politics, pretending to be socialist, pretending to be this. But I tell you, they're all right-wingers, the Swiss are. And as the Teutonic name Adolf means Adliger Wolf or Noble Wolf, he apparently possessed a private airplane in Argentina calling, called Flying Wolf and a boat called Seewolf or Sea Wolf. And in the 20s and 30s in Germany, his code name was Mr. Wolf. As his friends like the Wagner family used to call him. And when he was spying on German nationalists from 1918 to 1920 for the German army and the German police, Mr. Wolf has always betrayed the German people because he was working for the Swiss and their octagon. You can read the rest. The name Uruguay, this is where Mengele went to, and the other guy, Eichmann. Uh, the name Uruguay comes from the Swiss canton Uri, being one of the three founding cantons of the year 1291. And uh, look at the uh, look at the Apis bull, eh? And look at the sun showing at Argentina's flag, which are together with Uri's Apis bull, very important symbols for the pharaohs. And think of Hugo Boss, who developed and produced uniforms for the SS and the Nazis. And today shows fashion at Paris. It's haute couture, showing skinnies at fashion shows in all the big capitals of the world. New York, Rome, London.
where the uh, skinnies most probably remind them of the concentration camps to bring back good memories to the still around Nazis making Hugo, I'm sorry, huge business today. Still anyone believes the Nazis lost the war then? Germany, yes, the Germans lost the war, but not the Nazis, and most not, certainly not Switzerland. Look what happened, and watch for yourself, that Switzerland is the only country in Europe that won the war. And today we're probably in the year 68 of the Thousand Year Reich, counting from 1945 on. With all the information and proofs we have now, we must act now and feel in our hearts as if we were back in 1945 because they will do it again and even worse to come.